Professor Vaishnavi from Department of Commerce with e-commerce, Nirmala College for Women, Coimbatore. Today, in this video, we are going to see about tax system in India. The flow of presentation starts with tax meaning, taxonomy of Indian taxation, present tax structure in India, drawbacks of current taxation system, recent improvements in tax structure, goods and service tax, why does India need GST and objectives of GST. To start on with, first we will see what is tax or taxation. The word tax has been derived from the Latin word taxor. Tax is defined to be a compulsory exaction of money by public authorities enforceable by law for public purposes. So, it is considered to be the source of revenue to the government. And the persons or individuals who are taxed or liable to pay the tax irrespective of the return from the goods or services by the government. Thus, the tax rates vary from person to person or corporations which has been imposed on income and wealth. Next, tax system in India is of three tier system that is central government, state government and local bodies. The tax levied by central government will be on income tax, service tax, customs duties, central excise and sales tax. The tax levied by state governments will be on sales tax, stamp duty, state excise, land revenue, duty on entertainment, tax on professions and callings. The tax levied by local bodies will be on tax on properties, octroi, tax on markets and user charges for utilities like water supply, drainage etc. Now we will just have a quick view on taxation powers of union. First, income tax. Income tax has been introduced in the year 1961 and this tax has been imposed on all incomes except agricultural income. Next, excise duty, which has been introduced in the year 1944 on goods manufactured. Next, customs duty, introduced in the year 1962 on imports. Next, service tax, introduced in the year 1994 on specified services. Next, central sales tax, introduced in the year 1956 on interstate sale of goods. Next, we will just get an overview of present indirect tax structure in India. This present tax structure has four important constituents. First, excise duty. The provisions listed in entry number 84, list 1, schedule 7. And its taxable event is manufacture. Whereas its median rate is 12.5 percentage. With effect from 1-6. 2015. Second, service tax. The provisions listed in Desiudary Entry Number 97, List 1, Schedule 7. And taxable event is provision of service. Whereas single rate is 14 percentage with effect from 1-6-2015. Next, Customs Duty. The provisions listed in entry number 83, list 1, schedule 7. Whereas, taxable event is import and export. And, median rate will be 24.72 percentage. Then, Sales Tax or VAT that is Value Added Tax or CST that is Central Sales Tax. This provisions has been listed in entry number 54 of list 2, 
state vat and 92a of list 1 central and the taxable event is sale whereas its rates are 5 percentage 12.5 percentage and 20 percentage various rates from nil to 28 percentage now let us have a quick view on drawbacks of current taxation system first confusion or lack of clarity then lack of trust between assessee and revenue based on valuation classification or exemption third complexity in understanding next hidden tax on exports or no state tax next cascading effect cascading effect means tax on tax at each stage of products journey along the supply chain next high transaction costs high compliance costs and too much of litigation and disputes now let us have a quick view on recent improvements in tax structure first replacement of the single point state sales tax by the vat in all of the state and union territories next introduction of service tax by the rationalization of the central credit system this central credit system will be central value added tax credit system next self regulatory tax regime that is self assessment next dispute resolution measures now let us focus on gst what is gst a common tax on goods and services to continue with gst is a comprehensive tax and it is a value added tax applicable on goods and services at national level it is an indirect tax in place of tax on goods that is excise tax on service that is service tax and value added tax or central sales tax also it is termed to be as origin and destination tax that is from origin point or starting point or a starting place in which goods are sent out and destination point is the receiving place of goods next why does india need gst first to have ease of doing business next making exports competitive then protection from cheaper imports next no free interstate trade and commerce next cascading effect that is tax on tax next change in economic situation next levy of excise duty on manufacturing point next inability of states to levy tax on services then lack of transparency next multiple points of taxation next moving on to multiple registrations multiple re multiple registrations that is it has been registered in multiple times of places first for exercise then central excise then service tax then entertainment tax then luxury tax then vat that is value added tax registration next lack of uniformity in provisions and rates in this provisions and rates the value added tax has been taken as an example and in this example the two places have been mentioned one will be maharashtra and another will be gujarat so the goods from maharashtra to gujarat there is an entry tax of 4% whereas the goods from 
Gujarat to Maharashtra, there is no entry tax. Next, moving on to the objectives of GST. Here, listed some of the objectives of GST. First, common market, common tax. Second, borderless market, no interstate barriers. Third, uniformity of tax rates. Fourth, fully automated. Next, easy compliances. Next, no tax cascading across chain. Then, seamless input credit. That is, claiming of amount. For this input credit, we can take as an example, like if you are a manufacturer, then the tax payable on output that is final product is 450 rupees and tax paid on input that is purchases is 300 rupees then you can claim input credit of 300 rupees and you only need to deposit 150 rupees on taxes next objective Transparency to eliminate corruption. Next, improved competitiveness in which it will be easy in doing business and it reduces transaction costs. And this is an GST bill or invoice which has been cited as an example for the reference. To summarize with, taxation is governed by Schedule 7 of Constitution of India. India has a three-tier federal structure to levy and collect taxes. GST is a tax on goods and services with value addition at each stage having comprehensive and continuous chain of set of benefits from the origin that is producers or service providers point up to the destination that is retailers level where only the final consumer should bear the tax and GST encourages an unbiased tax structure that is neutral to business processes business models organization structure product substitutes and geographical locations so, these points mentioned in the above slides emerge the necessity of GST implementation. Next, from this presentation, we get an outcome that GST will allow India to better negotiate its terms in the international trade forums. GST aimed at increasing the taxpayer base by bringing SMEs that are small, medium enterprises and the unorganized sector under its compliance and this will make the Indian market more stable than before and Indian companies can compete with foreign companies. Hope you gain knowledge on tax system in India. Thank you for watching my video.